G'day, Michael here. Um, I've seen a lot of different approaches and had a discussions about different methods of engraving and how to achieve your file and you know the process you have to go through. Uh, in a Facebook group I'm in, there's uh, laser cutting and engraving. Great group. A lot of input from a lot of people with a lot of knowledge. And anyhow, one chap and I, we uh, started a conversation about different methods of engraving plywood. Now his machine and my machine may be very different in the way they perform and our pliers might be very, very different. So uh, the parameters he was using for his setup versus the parameters I need uh, may actually be different just simply because of those reasons. But also, I needed to test out you know, what he's thinking versus what I'm thinking so I can come up with some sort of, you know, learn from each other's ideas. Uh, in any case, I've got a comparison here of a file that he's prepared versus a file that I've prepared and my previous uh, files. And I can walk, I'm going to walk through them and show the differences. And, uh, yeah, I think I've learned something out of this. And hopefully this is, you know, of use to you too. So if you're learning how to laser engrave, maybe something that I've bumped on here may be a benefit to you. Maybe something the other chap said uh, might be a benefit to you also. In any case, here we go. Okay, so what we have here is the original colour photo of this card that I used in the two videos, the two uh, how-to videos earlier. This is a colour, uh, not a colour, a black and white laser print of the same photo. And you can see the absolute uh, washout of both the black and white. Um, this is the, I'm going to use the word faithful copy that I did with, uh, on the first example. And this was pushing the HDR to the limit, so as to give a lot of detail around the car. So probably the ideal in this photo would be somewhere between these two. The Faithful, which, as you can see, is limited very similarly to what a black and white laser print is. Or this heavily lifted one. So halfway between these, with the tweaking, would be probably a very acceptable thing, although... This has shown a lot of detail of the car that if, if you went in any way towards the faithful reproduction you'd end up missing some detail. So here we can even see a reflection of the road etc. So yeah, this is all perceptual but in any case this shows the range of the method that I showed in the previous videos. I've done this photo of my wife. This is a colour print of that on plain paper, not a photo print, but on plain paper. And this is what a black and white laser printer does. Now a black and white laser printer, which uses Floyd Steinberg dithering, I don't know whether that will show up, let's see if we get it to focus. It's sort of scattered dots. It basically washes out here on this white and absolutely floods, saturates on the black. Okay. So you can see my, um, I'm going to use the word faithful reproduction using uh, GIMP to its one bit conversion. Uh, the, the format that I used was the ordered type versus the error diffusion. Now I've had help from a friend in the laser group and he's I had a go at how he would normally process it with some tips as to how he would normally engrave it. These are the settings. This patch here represents there's oil wax on this side to see any difference <clears throat> and here is the unwaxed side we have a close look. Let's see if we can get that to focus. Come on, old girl. Focus. Focus on my finger, maybe. Okay. If you look at this, the don't be confused with the grain line of the plywood. The fingers is what I'm interested in here. But basically, it's too soft. Now that's done at uh, 290 millimeters a second. Uh, the output was uh, 20 to 30 percent of laser power. The pass width is 300th of an inch, or in other words, that in millimeters. Okay. Now the passes have to match the pixel height of whatever your photo print is. With this example, I worked backwards. I wanted a pass width. This is 0.15 of a millimeter between the passes. This is 0.2 millimeter between passes. And this is 0.1 millimetres between passes. Each one of these examples, I've used the ordered um, dithering, like I showed in my videos. 
That's a faithful. That's a faithful. And that's a faithful. This one here is using HDR and heavily tweaking. Okay. Now, this is a faithful uh, dithering, but obviously the amount of energy being thrown at this plywood is nowhere near enough. So, to see if I can get a bit more intensity in the engraving, I drop the speed down to 200 millimeters a second. Otherwise, it's an identical to the previous one. I put some oil wax here to see what sort of darkness I was getting out of the laser engraving. Still not dark enough. So I went a bit further. I, I bumped up the power from 30% to 50%. Still the same Photoshop image using the Aero Diffusion or Floyd Steinberg dithering. Now we might be able to see better here the dithering, how that's worked. A bit more contrast. It's kind of um, a harsher patching. If we have a look at the, the ordered method here, I find the, the half tones are actually a lot smoother with the ordered method than the Floyd Steinberg or the air diffusion. Generally I'm liking the, the um, ordered method rather than the air diffusion but I'm simply not seeing enough energy thrown at this cut to produce the blackness that is involved with that photo uh, of the camera versus the whiteness of the skin. I'll go back to the colour pen so you can see what I'm talking about. Forgive me for this shaking but it's, I'm just using a mobile phone. Um, yeah, so you can see that. Now here's the large thing which we can really zoom in on the how the ordered uh, diffusion works, the ordered uh, dithering. It's obviously focusing a lot better because it's a much bigger print. And you can see the details. You can also see the mechanical limitations of the laser. Because there's enough contrast here, the camera is actually focusing very, very well. Whereas it doesn't seem to be able to focus on the other engraving because there's not enough contrast. But you can see there's a lot of uh, contrast delivered, but yet quite uh, soft half tones. I'll have a look at the denim area, denim shirt. You can see the half tones are quite good. Versus the air diffusion isn't too bad, probably in, in this lighter area, but where you've got more subtle areas, it seems to be swallowed up by the grain of the plywood. As you can see here, this is a better better dithering, much much better definition here. Convince yourself. But anyway, I'm happier with this uh, dithering over this dithering. Now, the power, the spacing and um, speed are identical between these two prints. They've both got wax on them. So they've both been darkened as much as is going to happen. But in any case, I still think they both got uh, a too lower amount of energy. I think what I've done with the other engraving, with a higher amount of energy, has produced better images. Now this is a tiny image, that's in one of my previous videos, versus a colour print. And as you can see, it is, I, I believe it's a much better set of contrasts. You can see the rippling there, that's the mechanical limitations of the laser itself. I think it's actually the timing belts as they, they uh, sort of clip in and out of the you know, drive pulleys from the stepper motor. But anyhow you can see quite a lot of detail in that versus there's the colour print. So comparing that to the colour print I think it stacks up quite well. If you look at the the wheel here it actually looks very shiny going back to the colour print I don't know it doesn't even seem to look as shiny although you know the colour print's got a lot more information to work with. Laser engraving is very limited you can see the fuel filler there and the rear light and you can see how tiny this is compared to my finger so you can see the detail I've gotten here. Okay, now how did I achieve that? I'll go back to the computer and show you how the dithering is done. So let's look at the photo on the computer. Well, that's the original photo, let's open that with GIMP. At the simplest level, we can simply change this mode to indexed if we don't care about the size. I pick position, and that basically is the, the dithering method. But what you've got to do when you are cutting this with RD Works is to be sure that the size and the pass width of what you're doing matches. 
In my previous videos, I've shown how to uh, create the final size in the resolution of the image based on your pass width that you want to use. And different materials, different behaviors, etc., will dictate how wide your path width is. You'll have to experiment with your material and your machine. And you can work backwards. Uh, my other videos show how that is achieved. If we're working this way and we want RD Works to give a default size dictated, you have to work in and out of DPI. My other method is simpler. You simply only remember your overall size and your pass width, both at GIMP and at RD Works. If you look at the other video, you can see how that's done. Okay, so this being um, nominally 300 dpi means we have to use 100, uh, 1 300 of an inch as our pass width. Now, an inch is, uh, where's the calculator gone? There it is. An inch is 25.4 millimeters, or near enough, divided by 300. This nasty looking number is 1 300 of an inch in millimeters. So you can choose to use that as your method. I prefer to go the other way around where I pick my pass width and scale the photo before I change it to black and white. I'll undo here and I'll, I'll show how I did that. We have an image, so we're back to the color image. We go image, scale image. Here, let's say we wanted to have it 180 millimeters tall and we want to do uh, 0.15 millimeter passes. Uh, GIMP will do the calculation, that would make it uh, 1200 pixels high. So you go scale and you do the scaling before you go to black and white because it's important to have the uh, pixels lining up with your pass width otherwise it'll make a complete mess with funny harmonics. Okay so we go image mode indexed black and white one bit. As you saw I prefer the position but let's try the Floyd Steinberg. Let's zoom in on that. And you can see, this is what uh, Photoshop calls error diffusion. I think Corel Draw does too, for that matter. Anyhow, you can see this kind of uh, patching here. I might just undo that. Uh, I might copy that. Paste this new image. Okay, so I'll do this one. Uh, what size are we? 1200 high? Yep, so it's the same. So go image, mode, indexed. I'll do Floyd Steinberg on this one. Zoom in a couple of notches. On this one, I'll go image, mode, indexed, and I'll use position. Other systems are called it ordered. Uh, okay, so zoom one more notch in. Okay, so you can see the ordered produces a much nicer area here. I'll just go to that. So there, and there. You see that? This is a tricky area where we've got the highest contrast between white and black on the photo. This is the kind of the nastiest patch on the photo. So there's the uh, error diffusion, or Floyd Steinberg. And as you can see, the ordered produces nice uh, toning. So that's why I've chosen ordered. I might, um, I don't know, let's pick on that one. Image export. 180 high. Uh, 0.15. Okay, so let's import that. So it's 180 high at 0.15. There it is there. We lock the aspect ratio so it doesn't change shape. And it was 180 high. So that's its absolute size. Just move it where we want to have it. And when we go to set up for the engraving, change whatever speed you like. Uh, but the important thing is the 0.15. So it matches what our design was. So each pass is going to match 
the pixels we have in the photo. Okay, and then we can go start and edit machine it. This computer's not connected to the laser, it's just sort of a demo. All right, um, well, I hope that was of interest to you. Um, feel free to like, share, subscribe, make a comment, ask a question, make a suggestion, um, make a donation. If you'd like to see a particular type of video or something covered, uh, feel free to let me know there too. Bye for now.